Yes, it's John G. Sutton, Tales from the Jails. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the death penalty again, uh, since people noted that uh, I never mentioned uh, a particularly unfortunate miscarriage of justice in which an innocent person was uh, sentenced to death and subsequently hung. And so I'm going to deal with that today. Also, I forgot to mention yesterday that uh, the unfortunate Derek Bentley, who was hung in the Let Him Have It murder trial, uh, was subsequently pardoned by the, the government, by the Queen actually, and uh, exonerated because he was wrongfully convicted and unlawfully executed. Yeah, that's what happens when you've got a death penalty, you see. You're going to get unfortunate victims like that. People who are intellectually incapable of understanding the charges and uh, who are not, who should not, in any case, have been brought to trial because he should have been... If, if, if they've been dealing with him properly, he should have been dealt with in a, an institution for the criminally insane. That's where he would have gone today. And they would have subsequently found out that he was uh, not responsible. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about uh, a case that involves uh, a young man who was completely innocent, although rather feckless and something of an alcoholic, I believe, uh, that the man is Timothy Evans. Now, Timothy Evans was involved with a man called John Reginald Christie. And it was the year, it was 1949, when he was uh, associating in that area. But it was on the... Uh, in the, at the end of 1949, that uh, his wife and daughter were found murdered, and they were found in the wash house at the back of number 10 Rillington Place. Yeah, that now 10 Rillington Place is uh, in London West 12, I believe. Yeah. I've been to Ten where Rillington Place was. It's if you go right down Duquesne Road and turn left, directly up, turn left and directly opposite. There's new housing. It's all been knocked down now, but that's where Ten Rillington Place was. Still very atmospheric, or it was uh, in, in the 1970s when I went there. <clears throat> but it had been knocked down recently, knocked down. Uh, and uh, new housing built. So I was there when it was just knocked down. They were building the housing, you see. So, anyway, let me tell you about Timothy Evans. Yeah, he, he was uh, accused of murdering his wife, uh, his wife, Beryl Evans, and uh, his 13-month-old child, Gwent Geraldine. And they were found, as I said, strangled in the washroom at the back of the house of 10 Rillington Place. Now, 10 Rillington Place was the residence of John Christie. And uh, subsequently, John Christie was, uh, he, he was the guy who murdered all their women and boarded them up and buried them in the back gardens. He killed eight women. Yeah, it's a terrible, a horrible piece of work. John Christie was, yeah, but uh, anyway, Timothy Evans, uh, his trial was a farce really, the evidence was not properly presented, two workmen who had been working on 10 Rillington Place had left their tools in the washroom, in the wash house at the back of the uh, house, and they'd put them there after, supposedly, Timothy Evans had disposed of the bodies there, but the bodies weren't in there. They mean that the wash room was only about three foot by four foot. It was a very small area, just an enclosed area, and they put the tools in there. No bodies in there when they did that, but it didn't tie in with uh, Timothy Evans' statement. Anyway, it took the jury, believe this or not, 40 minutes 
40 minutes. That's all it took them to find Timothy Evans guilty. <clears throat> and it was on his trial started on the 11th of January. He was sentenced to death. Uh, the subsequent appeal was heard uh, by the Court of Appeal very quickly and uh, dismissed. And Timothy Evans was hung at Pentonville Prison, which is a big old Victorian jail in, in London. And the executioner was Albert Pyrrhipoint. He, he certainly did a few of them, didn't he? Yeah. So that, that's what happened to him. Yeah. But uh, it was subsequently proved when they arrested John Christie about three years later for various murders that uh, it was not the work of Timothy Evans in murdering Beryl Evans and the child. It was John Christie who'd done this. And John Christie, when they searched the house, you know, he had at the back of his uh, little house, which is not a big house, you know, maybe three stories high, but just an old Victorian terraced house, a little garden at the back, and propping up one of the fence panels was a, a human leg bone, a femur, yeah, the big bone in your, in your leg. He got one of them off one of his victims because he'd murdered a few by then and buried them in shallow graves or underneath the uh, <clears throat> the floorboards in the house and behind the, the walls. He put a false wall up and walled up some of his victims in there. It, it really is a terrible thought. There's a, a, a couple of films out about it. One's called Rillington Place. I highly recommend that you watch that. And uh, it's extremely disconcerting. There is one version, I think Christopher Eccleston plays uh, John Christie. It's extremely unnerving. Yeah, and it just gives you a real feel of what it, what it might have been like to be there. And as I say, I've been to the site of Rillington Place and if you go past down Duquesne Road with the Wormwood Scrubs on your left straight to the top up to the main road turn left and immediate right and that is the site of Rillington Place. Go and have a walk round. It, it's quite... there is an atmosphere there but you don't want to disturb the people who have bought houses. They have no no they'll have no knowledge that that took place there. Anyway, so that's today's Tales from the Jails, bringing up to date. That's the reason why there should be no death penalty. I mean, listen, I, I, I have seen people in prison for long periods of time, and that is a far worse punishment than taking a quick exit, yeah? You do 10, 20, 30 years in prison, that, that takes some doing, I tell you. Anyway... That's it. That was the case of Timothy Evans. And uh, I'm going to do the usual now. Here we are. Where have we got it here? Yeah. That's it. The song dinger. Yeah. And uh, I had a request for this song following yesterday's uh, murdering of the other song by Bernard Cribbins. This is his other hit. This is by Bernard Cribbins, who's recently passed away. Fine, wonderful, happy chap. Great entertainer. Yeah, and so I'm going to do this song as a tribute to Bernard Cribbins. This is Right Said Fred. Are you sitting comfortably? Good, then I shall begin. Right, said Fred, both of us together, one each end and steady as we go. To ride, to shift it, couldn't even lift it. We was getting nowhere, and so we had a cup of tea. And right, said Fred, give a shout for Charlie. Up comes Charlie from the floor below. After straining, heaving and complaining, we was getting nowhere, and so we had a cup of tea, and Charlie had a think, and he thought we ought to take off all the handles, and the things what held the candles, but it did no good, well I never thought it would, all right, said Fred, have to take the feet off, 
to get them feet off wouldn't take a moment. Took his feet off, even took the seat off. Should have got us somewhere, but no. So Fred said, let's have another cup of tea. And we said, right Oh, All right, said Fred. Have to take the door off. Need more space to shift the so-and-so. Had bad twinges taking off the hinges. And it got us nowhere. And so we... Had a cup of tea and right, said Fred, have to take the wall down. That there wall, it's gonna have to go. Took the wall down, even with it all down. We was getting nowhere and so we had a cup of tea and Charlie to think and he said, Look, Fred, I've got a sort of feeling if we remove the ceiling with a rope or two we could drop the blighter through all right said fred climbing up a ladder with his crowbar gave a mighty blow was he in trouble half a ton of rubble landed on the top of his dome so charlie and me had another cup of tea and then we went home. I said to Charlie, well, just have to leave it. Standing on the landing, that's all. You see, the trouble with Fred is he's just too hasty. And you'll never get nowhere if you're too hasty. There you go. Right, said Fred, by Bernard Cribbins. Completely slaughtered by John G. Sutton. Thanks for watching. Tales from the Jails. Like, subscribe, all the rest of it. See you soon.